Okay, we're going to talk about Millikan's oil drop experiment. Firstly, we have a container and there's this atomizer which has oil inside it. And we know the density of this oil. And then we have these plates uh, which will come out later and we're going to charge these plates later on. And then we can have a microscope which we can use to look at what's going on inside. And also there's going to be a scale inside which will let us measure the speed using the distance within inside the um, setup. And then we'll have a source of ionizing radiation. So this is going to help us ionize and make charged particles inside the container because it will knock our electrons and so on. So firstly, when you spray using the atomizer, you'll form these oil droplets. But because of the friction here between the oil and the atomizer, these oil droplets will be formed with either having gained an electron or, or maybe two or three electrons or lost uh, one, two, three, four electrons. So they'll become charged and then they'll fall through this gap here. And as they fall, they will eventually reach terminal velocity. Um, in case they haven't been charged, the X-ray source can also be used to charge them. But what happens, the X-ray source actually charges the air around it and then that can transfer an electron or take an electron from the oil droplet. So as it falls through, the oil droplet falls through, it will it's obviously got its weight, mg, and it's also got a drag force. And that's from Stokes' law, 6 pi eta rv. So we can figure out the terminal velocity by setting these two together. So this is what we did the last topic. So we showed that the radius can be determined using the terminal velocity of the oil droplet. Another, the, sec the second stage is now that we've worked out the radius using the terminal velocity, is we apply a potential difference between these two plates. These two plates are separated by some distance d and they have potential difference V across them. And we apply a voltage that's just enough to keep the droplet balanced at stationary within, um, within the, uh, between the plates. So you can have the weight of the droplet is balanced by the electric force upwards. So the electric force obviously charge times the electric field strength and the electric field strength is the voltage divided by the distance. So this will let us work out the charge Q. Okay, so let's see how. So Millikan noted that um, when no potential difference is applied across the potential uh, parallel plates, the oil droplet falls through at a steady speed, and that's the terminal speed that they've given us here. Uh, and we've got the density and we've got the viscosity. This is actually the same question we did as an example in the last video. And we show that using R equals 9 eta VT terminal velocity over rho G, we've got a radius of 1.63 times center minus 7 meters. Now this will help us determine the mass of the, in the particular oil droplet because of course all the oil droplets will have different masses depending on how they came out of the uh, atomizer so but this will tell, tell us, help us figure out the radius of a particular oil droplet the distance between the parallel plates is 10 centimeters when a potential difference of 35.2 volts is applied the droplet is stationary find the charge of uh, the oil droplet okay so now it's no longer falling at terminal velocity. now what's going on it's its weight is balanced by the electric force Q V over D. So, but the, to figure out, figure out the mass, we're going to use the information from the previous part. So, we're going to do is the mg <coughs> is equal to Q V over D, and m is going to be the volume of the sphere of the droplet times the density, which gives us the mass, and multiply that by g to give us the weight, which is going to equal Q over d. So rearranging this, you should get ch charge is equal to 4 over 3 pi r cubed density times gravitational field strength times distance over the potential difference that stopped the charge, it made it stationary. So if I put these numbers in, 4 over 3 
times pi times 1.63 times 10 to the minus 7 cubed times the density of the oil 915 this question times the gravitational field strength the distance between the plates in meters and then divide that by the potential difference and this gives us 4.80 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs now if you look at this very carefully and you divide this by 1.6 times into the power of minus 19 the charge of an electron you find that this is approximately 3 times the charge of an electron and that's what you're going to find with all the results you find that they're all multiples of 1.6 times into the power of minus 19 um, and this helps us come to the conclusions so yeah if you he repeated the experiment multiple times Millikan and he found these results and if you look at all these results they either either gained uh, an integer number of electrons so for example in this case the oil droplet has gained two electrons here it's it's a multiple it's three times the electron electrons charge here it's an electron here it's they've gained or lost it doesn't matter and then here it's four times so he came to the conclusion that charge is quantized in other words it comes in discrete packets with the smallest being 1.6 times into the power of minus 19 coulombs